Right now, daydreaming. Any of us have done it one time or another. It can be a pleasant, relaxing way to pass some time, but for others, daydreaming becomes a nightmare, a trap that they cannot escape. You know, it was the first thing I did when I woke up in the morning, and any free second I had. You know. For Jane Biggleson, daydreaming was a full-blown compulsion. She stepped out of reality and retreated into her own mind where her favorite TV shows played over and over. It felt like watching TV, but like a surround sound, like you were in, you were writing the scripts. She says it took a toll. I started to prefer it more than the real life, and I found myself making excuses not to see my friends. It was all consuming. Cordelia Rose also daydreamed excessively, creating in her mind a never-ending cast of characters. It built into, you know, they grew friends and they grew relatives and then further and further out, and pretty soon I started fantasizing about their generations. She says it gave her what she lacked in real life. They gave me a lot of love, and I needed a lot of love. Both say they knew something was wrong, but couldn't find any answers. Every doctor said there's no such thing um, and didn't understand what I was talking about. It is a real phenomenon. Then in 2002, Dr. Eli Sommer published the first scientific paper on the disorder, naming it maladaptive daydreaming. His subjects spent 60% of their waking hours daydreaming and were helpless to stop it. The experience is described by people who um, are coping with it as uh, as addictive. Rose started a website that now has 6,000 followers. I've, I've har learned to harness it. I've heard from people from all over the world saying that this is their story, that they've felt this way for years. And Biggleson has herself become a researcher looking for answers. I really want it so that people um, who are seeking help don't ever feel like I did. Biggleson's daydreaming is controlled with an antidepressant because there's so little known about the disorder. There is no standard treatment, which is why she and others say more research needs to be done.